Simp turned leader every man wishes to be. Hamza documentary. Imagine a shy, small and overweight boy in your class. Really, picture him. The kind of guy who might be bullied, never chosen for the football team, skips classes. If I would tell you this guy would become a leader that every man wants to be, would you believe me? That was Hamza. The very opposite of what you would envision as successful, the last likely person to become a leader or a millionaire. Now Hamza has 2 million subscribers and he has his own business making millions. So in this video we will go through his entire story. We will learn how his business model works and so much more. My name is Francis Baranski and I'm inspired by Zero to Heroes journeys of internet creators because I'm trying to do the same and I also paint their stories in watercolor scrapbooks. Enjoy. So Hamza is not successful but he is obsessed. He loves video games and that's where he truly engaged. He had few friends in school but his real connections were forged in the worlds of League of Legends and Minecraft. Hamza isn't athletic. He skips PE classes and ends up gaining weight. He is skinny fat. And there was one thing Hamza desperately wanted, the attention of girls. And he was captivating by the idea of getting a six pack, solely because he believed girls would like it. But the only way he knew how to interact with these girls was by bullying them, being rude and unfriendly. Essentially, he was a simp. You can imagine how this affects his self-esteem. But then, first time in his life, he decides to make a change. He embarks on a low calorie diet and soon he notices the initial results. This sparks something in his head. This small step becomes a monumental foundation of his entire persona because he realizes that achieving results is actually possible. So he starts college slimmer and looking a bit better. However, to make him focus on studying, his parents make this decision. They block his computer. So imagine being this shy, skinny fat guy whose only real friends are online in these games and then losing them entirely. Hamza is lonely. He is shy, he has no real friends, and he believes that the attention of girls is just something that he's not allowed to have. But there's a ray of hope. Seeing his struggles, Hamza's brother introduces him to the gym. In that modest, somewhat musty room, Hamza begins his training journey. And the results come quickly. Moving up from what he considered the lowest point, he notices his first improvement within weeks. His obsessive personality kicks in, and Hamza becomes addicted but now with a meaningful direction. With each passing month, he observes changes in his body, finally finds joy in his reflection in the mirror. But more importantly, he adopts a progress mentality, realizing he can improve himself, acknowledging that change is possible, shifting from passively waiting for life to unfold to actively taking control. He starts to play the best video game there is, called Life, where experience points are earned through self-development. Hamza suddenly realizes he's not inadequate anymore. He's actually good looking and he's far from being the worst person around. He gains confidence. He finds himself speaking up, initiating conversations, asking questions, engaging in dialogue, and he achieves it. He gets apps. And with those apps, girls start talking about him. He becomes more confident, sociable, finding himself joking around and making new friends and he attracts his first ever girlfriend. For the first time in his life, he feels like a normal person and he understands right now the self-development and its results truly are real. So he enters the university life as a completely new person. At 19, Hamza didn't fully grasp how the world worked. Unsure of his path, he followed the crowd for the most common destination, university. At this point in his life, his priorities were simple. He was focused on enjoying life, forging friendships and fucking meeting girls. And so he embarked on a new chapter where his social abilities truly flourished. In this fresh setting, people saw him differently. Dedicated to his daily workouts, he quickly became known as the gym bro. Moreover, his confidence skyrocketed. He was the guy. Stage 2. The fuckboy. Imagine observing this high value, disciplined and motivated individual. You see him as someone admirable, someone you would like to engage with, someone respected by everyone. And then, unexpectedly, he approaches you, inviting you to train alongside with him, showing genuine interest in you. Wouldn't you say, wow, this is truly someone special? And Hamza realized this, this was true leadership, a true charisma. To first establish himself as someone higher, to then come down to the person at lower stages. He realized that everyone feels lonely and yearns to be accepted, approached, invited and included and he made it his mission to do just that, a true essence of charisma. Hamza also took up the American football classes when he found his profound love for teamwork. However, he actually gave it up. But there, in the American football pitch, 
there was the place when he discovered his passion for being a part of the team where he could lead on the field and excel as a true team player. This decision of quitting the American football team was the most regret in his life because in this American football team, he finally found the sport that his true leadership could flourish. Diving into boxing instead, Hamza discovered a different kind of solitude. It was not quite brotherhood-like, but despite the lack of social interaction in the sport itself, he used it as the opportunity to extend his social life circle. By inviting others to his parties, he cultivated a sense of popularity, brotherhood that he had never experienced before. His standing room became a hub of activity, a place where friendships were forged. This newfound popularity and a sense of community made him feel great, affirming his role as a pivotal figure on campus. At this time, Hamza realized his top value. Embracing honesty became a cornerstone of Hamza's transformation. He understood that the true confidence doesn't coexist with deceit. He became a 100% honest man. This shift marked a significant evolution in his character, enhancing his relationships and self-respect. Because when you decide to speak truth all of the time, you don't have to even think about the lies you have to tell. You become confident with your words, you become straightforward, people feel it, they notice it, and they respect you even more. I want to create a brotherhood. We party together, we train together, we get girls together. I want you to join me. Now this is a true leadership. His honesty about his intentions, desires, resonated with many, both guys and girls, earning him respect and loyalty. This position also gave him even more attraction and female gaze, and despite attraction, attention and affection, he was clear about not seeking serious relationships. He just wanted to fuck these girls, and he started to be known as a heartbreaker, the word every past simp wants to be called. Coming back to his hometown for the summer break, he realized how much he has changed. He's not the same person anymore. Yet, when he encounters his old friends, their reaction is not what he expects. They accuse him of pretending to be someone else, making him feel isolated once again. Despite this, Hamza takes pride in his physical transformation, recognizing it as a cornerstone of his success. And also, there is this dream of his lurking in the back of his head, starting a YouTube fitness channel. So why hasn't he started back then? This was just a fear disguised as excellence. He convinced himself that he's too small and too ugly to be a fitness YouTuber. This is why he didn't even start. And if you think about it yourself, maybe you have the same problem. This is procrastination. This is perfectionism. This is your fear disguised as excellence. You just want to practice more, learn more, then start. This is such a bullshit. I created the six weeks challenge when you go step by step out of your comfort zone. Check the first link in the description. I help creators start today and you will have your first video published in 15 minutes. No more waiting, man. Can you picture Harry Potter eagerly awaiting his return to Hogwarts, but just being buffed and muscular? That's how Hamza felt about getting back to his social passions, the gym, the bustling social scene, and the admiration from friends. And at his third year of university, with his friends, he upgraded to a fancy apartment the pinnacle of his dreams, where a party life overshadowed his studies, far removed from university's responsibilities. However, he didn't realize that long commute time will cut him off from the social life at the campus, the cornerstone of his happiness. So the partying lifestyle began to lose its charm. Compounding this, Hamza indulged in junk food, smoked weed, drank with friends in his apartment, and to support this lifestyle, he worked two part-time jobs. Each Monday evening, before his two days job, he was feeling so shit, like so depressed, like life lost his beauty. And this depressive feeling made him drink, party, smoke even more, putting him in this cycle of negative actions and negative thoughts as well. The fun partying uni life was gone. The same as Hamza's mental health. He got fat again. He forgot how to be social. He started closing up. Despite having friends, girlfriends to party with, Hamza felt profoundly lonely. The recognition and admiration he once enjoyed vanished. Removed from the university environment and living a year in his apartment, his identity died. He, he couldn't stand looking at himself in the mirror. A reflection of how far he had fallen from his once prized physical condition. The gym bro was gone. The body that once was his greatest pride, a core part of his identity, now was lost sleepless nights, overthinking, trapped in an endless cycle 
of negative thoughts, he felt besieged in his own psyche, perceiving his own mind as his greatest enemy. This is the darkest period of Hamza. Around him, people wished him well, but in truth, no one could relate. His mind became a battleground of intrusive thoughts. Eating desserts didn't bring joy. It only led to self-loathing, hating himself of not keeping to his promises, followed by hating himself even more by hating himself. There was nothing left that brought him happiness, not even the warmth of the sun. Now it was just irritating. So Hamza is on the edge of depression. And when it came the time for his final exam of the university, he prayed to fail. Because in his mind, that was the only way to recover, to start the year again, to be rebooked at the student accommodation house, to be again with his crew, to gain the respect and become the gym bro again. But he passed the exam. Hamza graduated. And then the reality hit him hard. And he says, oh, I graduated. Okay, so now what? A full-time job? Well, I can't even get the real, real job with this shit piece of paper. What was this really for? To make himself a little bit of vacation, he goes to Thailand. And there he tries meditating, he tries journaling to calm down his negative thoughts a bit. And also he experiences his first ever entrepreneurial success. In Thailand, he bought this unoriginal Nike shirts for three bucks each. And he put them on eBay for 20 bucks. And just before he had left, he actually sold all of them, making him 400% return on investment. This was his first money online in 2020. Moving back with his parents, Hamza found himself without a job or money. But this also meant he had something invaluable, the time. Time to hit the gym, to plan his next moves, to lay down the foundation for his future vision. It was a period of preparation, self-reflection. With time on his hands, Hamza took up running, a simple but effective step back toward fitness. Gradually, he got back in shape, started meditating even more and began to regain his confidence. The stress that had been waiting on him eased. It was a turning point. Suddenly, things started to look up. Three job offers came his way, a beacon of hope and the job hunt. He is excited that he got this real job, that he can finally start his career, that he can finally make the real money. However, within two months, his mental health began to deteriorate. The job, maybe prestigious one, was far removed from his personal aspirations and project. It was just commuting and working eight hours for the dreams of others, draining his energy for his own goals. To the outside observer, Hamza seemed to have it all together. A job, a routine, a life, a good physique. But internally, he was so shit. He was struggling. The daily grind from 5 a.m. gym sessions to 6 p.m. finishes the work left him feeling empty. Despite the outward appearance of progress, he felt as he has squandered his life trapped in a cycle that brought him no joy. So Hamza hates working five days a week. He is dying inside. But he does the math and he sees that if he would work only two or three days a week, then he, his pay wouldn't be that lower. He thought, if only I could make money online anyhow, somehow just by doing whatever, even selling this Nike shirt on eBay. This would be winning at life. So Hamza puts his thoughts onto a paper. He wrote an ebook critiquing the full-time job virus. His dream was to break free from traditional employment and yearning for the freedom to work from anywhere, to become a digital nomad. He was thinking, well, what business I could start today? What would offer a income stream? Hamza decided that he will go to the part-time job and he got one. And it was a golden dream of his. Landing a security job at a homeless accommodation, Hamza found an unexpected gold mine. Time. The role required him to be present, but alone doing whatever he wanted with his laptop. So he started to work on his dropshipping store, coding, reading, watching videos. He tried almost everything. This job, lasting five months, was a crucial period of exploration and development. Finally, as Hamza seems to have his life put together with this job that allows him to work on his business, then shit hits the fun again. It's the time of coronavirus pandemic, and it brought additional changes, including helping a homeless guy that was kicked out of a homeless accommodation, and Hamza tried to help him, but it stressed him out so much. Coronavirus, the gyms are closed, so Hamza cannot train, so he indulged with his girlfriend, they eat desserts every day, they smoke weed every day, they play video games every day and getting these negative thought cycles. You should stop smoking. 
you have this shitty job, you are rubbish, you don't even go to the gym, you have work tomorrow and you are wasting your time every single day. So even though he's kind of working on his business, there is no focus, there is no clarity. He is indulged in the low quality lifestyle. Deep down, he knows that this isn't the lifestyle that he wants to have. Deep down, he knew that he's meant for something more. So how does that think about this concept of life inflation? When you make more money, you spend more money. So he is thinking about something in reverse, life deflation. If he would earn less, then he would also spend less. With this deep thinking, he finally takes maybe the most important decision in his life. He decides to leave his girlfriend and come back to his parents. So Hamza is living now with his parents. He doesn't have to work, allowing himself to dive fully into building his own online business. He knows what he gotta do. He kicks off a detox, cleansing himself of past destructive habits and mindset that held him back. Porn, weed, alcohol, partying, casual sex, sugar cravings. Alongside this, he turned to books, absorbing knowledge and wisdom to fuel his growth. This marked the beginning of genuine self-improvement journey. And for the first time in his life, Hamza feels genuinely content. Hamza always wanted to be a fitness YouTuber, and now he is doing it. He made the first video about his transformation, then he made the video about how to get the perfect body, no bullshit guide. And he was the first guy on YouTube that openly said that guys want to have their bodies developed to get bitches. I mean girls. That was unique, that was fresh, that was something new. Hamza started to put out his message, aiming to inspire and guide others through his own experiences and transformations. <laughs> but let's get real, his first videos were mediocre, they were fucking shit. But he was putting there something special, his personality, his life stories, his insights, the true genuine self. So what's maybe the most, the greatest thing about Hamza is he isn't poisoned by imposter syndrome. He knows his value. So for example, I have it. I'm thinking, oh, what real value I can give? Can I really help someone with my life advice? I have cool stories, but who cares? This is why this is so important to start even today imperfectly and start providing this value and learning this stuff. He knew his value. He knew that he can beat the bigger guys like Ali Abdal or Mattia Vela. He says, fuck these guys. I can surpass them. I can be better. If you, th if you think about it, YouTube is the most in-demand job ever. 40% of people in the world want to do YouTube. And for Hamza, that's good because demand is so high. This is why to succeed, you got to create your own category, your own niche. Uh, because every viewer is looking for the creator that is extremely similar to them. So if you can put your real self, tell your real stories, share your real insight, you will find millions of the similar people that want to follow you. Some people say that you got to compete only with yourself, but this is bullshit. You competing with someone higher than you, this makes you go forward. So for example, I could compete with Dotford. He is creating these documentaries about famous people, actors, directors. And if I would think that I can beat the guy who has 300,000 subscribers or half a million subscribers or the guy who has 2 million subscribers, this puts me in a totally different mindset. And this is why Hamza was all about sharing his journey in his own unfiltered words, aiming to offer value and impact on a grand scale. He knew that he got to deliver as much value as he can, because if it wouldn't be valuable, nobody would watch it. Him creating his content was like having a heart to heart with his younger self, crafting videos filled with the advice that he wished he had received at 18. He knew exactly what types of videos this person would watch, and this is how he built his initial audience, all while continuously mastering his skills, speech, marketing, sales, truly mastering the art of becoming a YouTube pro. Hamza was always dreaming about the online income, any income from any business. And he knew that once he hits virality, his life will change forever. This is why he was really trying it out, trying different, different things, different flavors and going through this journey of self-discovery, on of trying new content ideas, he finally finds it. Inspired by these memes videos, combining them with real-life self-improvement advice, he creates it. Jeffrey vs Adonis, or should I say, Adonis. People seem to love this, and Hamza starts getting attention. He turned himself 
into a true synthesizer, mixing up lessons from his life into valuable content. He got the simple formula, learn stuff, try it out, and then spill the beans on YouTube. And why would Fox pick Hamza over a button-up pro? Because he is relatable as fuck, a simp turned chat who's been there, done that. He is a Adonis that once was Jeffrey, like, hey, I messed up here, but look what I've learned. That's how Hamza became go-to person for anyone looking to get real with self-improvement. Stage 3. The High Value Man So Hamza is still small as a creator, but he is driven to succeed. Coming from the shitty level, knowing the taste of the shit life he experienced, he is driven to do anything to succeed. And he tries to figure it out. Reading about it, thinking deep about it, asking questions about his audience, self-inquiring, thinking how he can go viral. What makes him unique is that he started to learn about the stuff outside YouTube, real stuff examples to help him in this specific area. He reads a lot about sales, marketing, about content creation, becoming an expert, becoming a leader, becoming an influencer. Even if this business is generating zero money, he treats YouTube as his life's work. Hamza believes that your personality is what makes you money. It is 100,000 more important than tricks or tactics like SEO or some shit. How do you speak? How much leadership you have? How much of an influence you have? Would you watch your videos yourself? Are you entertaining to watch? Are you valuable to watch? Do you speak with conviction or like a pussy? Hamza also thinks big. He has this big movement mindset. He creates this community because he is bigger than life. He isn't just a YouTuber making the videos. He is on a mission. He wants to spread the message of self-development for generations to come. He wants to help young people to experience the same results as he experienced back then. Also, he is fucking driven. He talks about his real life experiences. He shares to your, he shares his stories. He tells you what to do exactly. And this is why he is so addictive because he is fucking driven. And also because he uses these dark tactics. Hamza researching success, business models and way for himself notices something interesting. He sees that success of pyramid schemes could also work on YouTube. And this realization is so profound that he knows that it will be a banger. So he decides to say it out loud. He says, he says that he will create a cult. The first ever pyramid schemes that's positive. His mission is to get people into self-development and he wants his followers to gather new followers, spreading the message of self-improvement everywhere and him being a cult leader. So he asked them, to make the videos copying him, also to make the videos about him if they don't agree with him. These tactics, while seem noble, because while seem noble, they are kind of a deep, dark tactics. Because people thinking they are doing a great deed for humanity, for other people, they are also growing the power of the leader. And also this strategy is the most appealing for the minds of vulnerable young men. Another dark tactic of Hamza is becoming controversial. He is so polarizing with his masculine aggressiveness. He says, shut up, bro, just shut up. He punches the camera. He is having the hard statements. He talks some shit about other people. He touches this toxic masculinity, putting his followers into the feeling of they are better than others. And at this time, Hamza is also, also making negative videos about other YouTubers with viral potential, like Andrew Kirby criticizing him, trying to expose him. And with these tactics, with this approach, which is genius by the way, he got so much attention even from his negative stuff that only worked for his favor. So now Hamza is getting some attention, but still he is so broke, he has no money. So he thinks how he can make even $100, $200. So he starts this coaching business where he gives the advice to younger people. But still, it's like, no, not big money. The cash flow is there, but it's still a tickle. He is putting in the work, yet the big bucks are playing hard to get. <laughs> well, I mean, he's broke as fuck. He's literally an unemployed guy making YouTube videos in his bedroom, living with his parents, and he prays, he prays for getting $100, $200, so he could do something to go out. So Hamza is thinking how he can make the money, how he could make even this $100. This would be a life saving for him. And he has one thing in his mind. He decides to create this course of getting your dream body. So he is working on the course and he's really putting himself into these videos. And then at this time, his videos from the beginning of his YouTube journey started to go viral. Finally, after one half year, Hamza gets it. His video is going viral. And this is the same video on the same topic as his course. 
how to create your dream body. So finally, Hamza gets the traffic, he has a product out there, and he gets sales. So from now on, Hamza's life is transformed. He will, be, he will never be broke again. Because once you get the results, your life is transformed, your identity shifts. This is just the point of exponential return that I am waiting for it as well. This is just the point when your inputs finally pay back. This is the point that many people are waiting for and just a handful of people gets it because you need patience, you need persistence, you need the hard work. So I'm waiting for it as well with these videos and Hamza finally got it. So now there's another step for him. He has the money. He can really step up his game of content creation. And somehow during this time, Hamza also learned how to be addictive because people watching him are invited to this world of fast cuts, meme-like fast videos. These videos are just super digestible, super entertaining. And while watching them, you feel like you would do something productive. You get this advice, these wise words, and you start getting hope and the feeling of being better while actually you are just getting dopamine. Hamza also does some subconscious tactics. <laughs> I mean, look at him here. He is trying to portray himself as a Jesus. Of, of course, this is some kind of this is not straightforward, this is kind of subconscious tactic, but still, he is trying to speak to your subconscious mind, trying to say, hey, I'm a good guy, I'm the best guy. But also, we got to remember that at this point, he has crazy charisma. He gained so much experience, he gained so much knowledge and wisdom, he learned how to talk about it, he knows how to be hooking, how to be interesting, he knows how to create entertaining videos. He has so much confidence with his results, he has so much authority in his words, he is polarizing, he has strong opinions and he's so powerful with his camera presence. This combination is so, so, so good, so powerful and he combines it with the super fast paced editing, with the storytelling, videos are super digestible, relatable, personal, life stories and everything about this gets you hooked. And also, it is challenging for you. In the first seconds of the video he says that you can't focus, so you want to prove you can focus. He's telling you that you are lazy and unproductive, so you want to you want to prove he's showing you the Jeffrey, so you don't want to be the Jeffrey, you want to be the Adonis. So you want to watch, you want to learn, because there's this guy, this authority guy, the leader guy, was there before you. And at the same time, he is your friend, your older brother that you never had. He's no bullshit guy who will tell you honestly how life works, who will show you how to get results that you always dreamed of. And he's using the simple storytelling from A, the Jeffrey, this is you right now, and Hamza was here too, to then be the Adonis, where he is right now, and you want to be. And then the videos are just how to get from A to B. This is how he started selling the dream. And this is how he created the real life cult following. So this is a simple formula to create your cult right now. You have to have the message. We don't play video games. We don't do instant gratification. We want women while getting our mental health health as high as possible. We are not like others, victim, pussies, low quality simps, Jeffreys. Also, he chooses the weak links, appealing to introverts or antisocial people, gamers that has no life. Also, he's creating the sense of belonging. Hey, you are different and I am different. We are different together. So we should make a team. We gotta hold ourselves strong. We are us versus them. So you should join. He uses images and symbolism as Jeffrey and Adonis. There's also the enemy and throwing rocks at them. Video games, laziness, steroids, dopamine, and your own mind, which is your enemy. He is also making it about them, the product for their needs, helping them, making them feel better than others, different, special, fueling the hope of becoming this Adonis that everyone dream of. He's also showcasing himself as bigger than life. The guy who made it, the overcame the shit in his life, came out of the rut, and now he's not just making the videos, he is on a mission to change the entire road of mankind, to help the generations of men to come, and he's also gathering the apostles to spread his message. This is how you create the cult. <sighs> so all of these dark tactics worked. Hamza became so polarizing that either people loved him 100% and wanted to follow his advice, or he was so repulsive that people were, were making videos hating him and talking about his weird cults. Either way, he got so much attention, either negative or positive, that he got so, so, so big. If you think about it, this was also so genius strategy. He was willing to put himself out there 
not being likable, being polarizing, and this bring him success. So if you will watch his videos, he doesn't seem as this devilish person that laughs after turning on the camera and he thinks, ha 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 ha, I fucked all these guys. No, he talks as he would really think it through. He puts these videos where he thinks out loud, how will people behave in 2027? How we can stop the video games disease, how we can change the humankind, how we can stop this dopamine bullshit, how we can save the masculine man of the future, how we can create a better world for our kids, how we can stop the society from fapping. He really thinks on a big scale and he really thinks how he, the one guy, can change the world. He's bigger than YouTube, he's bigger than life. Hamza starts his unfiltered channel. This is the channel where he just turns on the camera and he talks for one hour, two hours, speeding this unfiltered, unedited advice. And this is great. But at the same time, his main channel became more edited, more flashy, and more like TikTok videos. Hamza is preaching this dopamine detox, avoiding these short form videos, and he is putting the same videos as well. What the fuck, man? And then he says that his main channel is for low conscious guys gaming guys, TikTok guys, depressed guys, the guys with short attention span, the guys who cannot go through 16, 42 hours videos. So Hamza is liking the unfiltered channel way more because this is just him talking to the camera, showing value within his words, within his personality. And people seem to love it even more because other self-improvement channels are filled up with pussy improvement. Beautiful videos, highly edited, storytelling, visuals, editing, this is their value. Versus inspiring someone with yourself, with your words, with your personality. Tell me a real life story, bro. Authentic, unfiltered. Tell me about your skills. Tell me what should I do. This is what I experienced as well. I went through this 42 day challenge when I was creating the videos every day and I realized that with these videos every day I cannot hide behind the editing, behind my paintings, the real value that I can provide I have to provide by my words and by my personality. And this changed my mindset so much and showed me how important it is to put yourself out there and that really people What's this connection and what's the authentic self without editing, without fancy stuff like paintings? This is why I'm thinking about creating my own unfiltered channel. Actually, I, I made it. So if you would like to see my videos unfiltered, check the link in the description. So Hamza's content right now is genuine as fuck. The level of authenticity is, oh my God, man. Even if he's acting, this is so great, but he doesn't feel like acting. So here right now he has this perfect funnel. He has his main channel, really big, 2 million subscribers. And he has there this fast paced, super edited videos for gaming guys. Then they are introduced to his main channel, unfiltered channel, when he introduces them to self-development in these long, long videos. And then if you want to really achieve the results, he has his courses. This is a perfect system. But he wants to go even bigger. He wants to succeed even more. So Hamza has this thing of Dream 10. The Dream 10 guys that he would like to be on the level of. And one of these guys was the one and only Iman Ghazi. And Hamza wanted to make the podcast with him. And Iman Ghazi invited him to Dubai. He paid for everything. He paid for tickets. And they met. And they created a podcast. Hamza, going from his parents' house, first time in his life, he experienced big money, big wealth, big parties with celebrities with models and this was hooking they definitely talked business and at this moment it was a logical step hamza was about to move to dubai so this was actually one year later when hamza was set up to move to dubai and business wise this would be the wisest thing but then i think he used the dark tactic again he said in this crazy short video that they are kind of going for him that he is getting demonetized, that they are blocking his videos. He tried to sell his audience that the Matrix, like the big guys are going for him, like Iman Ghazi is doing in all of the time. Like, hey guys, I'm getting canceled. Discord is getting canceled. My YouTube videos are getting demonetized. And Hamza also says at the same time that he is thinking about quitting, that he's tired of YouTube, that he is not feeling secure on this platform, that he's tired and he needs also a new platform to spread the message. And the safest way would be to gather the email addresses. I don't know if that is true, but it seems just like this marketing strategy of like Iman Gazi is always using. 
because this creates this feeling in your followers like, wow, oh my God, our leader is in danger. My favorite creator is in danger. I gotta help him. We gotta help him. So, okay, he's asking only for this email address. I can give my email. I can even pay something. So this is, even if that was true, that he had some deep in his algorithm, I mean, in his statistics, I think it wasn't 100% genuine and older Hamza, later Hamza, wouldn't do something like this. He would be just straightforward and telling us it is without this gimmicks or something. It was inevitable that Hamza will go Iman Gadi's way, Andrew Tate's way. He will put out the new course. He will make money. He will transition into a rich guy lifestyle, the Dubai lifestyle, mansions, fast cars, suits, shirts, appealing to the lizard brain, how to be wealthy, how to make big money, Dubai, apartments, partying with celebrities. And honestly, if this is how Hamza's story would end, I would puke, man. <sighs> this would be so <sighs> ingenuous. This would be so bad. This wouldn't be his style because this would be kind of against what he was preaching before and against his values that he was into. And I would understand if Hamza would start training and become a kickboxer like Logan Paul or Jake Paul or whatever, and he would start kicking asses of other YouTubers. This would be his style. But going for this rich guy lifestyle in Dubai, totally not his style. Because what we watched before, he was all into wisdom and knowledge. And this rich lifestyle seems just fucking shallow. So this wouldn't be just his style. Hamza says that he's tired of YouTube, that he doesn't care anymore, that he is somewhat like YouTube enlightened and he needs a break. But actually, he never quits. He continued with these videos and he went to the Thailand again. He refought his life and instead of quitting, he put out his new community. So at this point, Hamza went through many businesses, YouTube, Instagram, trying to become a rapper, coding, dropshipping. But with the personal brand that he has, there are three levels of business, coaching, courses, and community. And this is the best because you are super close with your followers. You have like your own social media. You basically gather your friends there and you are the leader. And having this monthly subscription, it pushes you to provide real value every month. Because if you are not providing value, people will quit. This is so good. Taking aside his dark tactics, he approached his community with real love, as Sam Owens did. So he was asking his early people, hey, how can I make it better for you? What we should do with you? What do you really want? What would you like to see? So he was really trying to put as much value as he could, because this concept of monthly subscription and membership, this is putting you in the position of, okay, right now I have to provide the real value because if I won't provide value, people will just unsubscribe. And this way, if you will make your community exceptional, if you truly believe you are delivering value, real value and big value that people need to pay big bucks for it, this is putting you in the mindset of accidentally selling it, just naturally selling it. You can't help but sell it because you truly believe in it. This is really powerful approach. So this is the path. Learn, teach, create a brand based on your personality, grow your YouTube channel with your personal stories, then send people to your community and provide a ton of real value there. This is how you make the big bucks. It's not easy, but this is the best way, the most fulfilling way. So actually, after experiencing life in Dubai, Hamza is coming back home. He doesn't want that. He doesn't feel that. For him, living in Dubai was not his style. He is more into nature. He's more into deep stuff. He's not into suits, partying, celebrities and stuff. This is not for me, for him. Imagine this, you are making literally tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars, and you still choose the simple lifestyle, living in your home with your parents. This may seem weird, but this is something about what your true values are. So with this decision of not staying in Dubai and actually coming back to his roots, with this move, Hams shows that he is into something deeper, not just this shallow life. And this way, he's coming to the fourth stage, authentic sage. 
So Hamza is becoming more authentic, just a genuine dude who hit the record button and let the world in. People can't help but feel a connection to him because he is all about keeping it real. He shows off his personality, shares his stories and just doesn't bother with a mask. It's like being in a long-term relationship where being your authentic self is key. Only those who truly get you will stick around and genuinely appreciate yourself. And guess what? His fans aren't just fans, they are like die-hard supporters who've seen the real Hamza and thought, yes, that's our guy. This is what he teaches. Forget chasing viral fame. It's all about the value you bring to the table by your personality. Like spending 10 solid hours crafting a guide that, that leaves your viewers shocked and eager to share. He is like a knowledge body, educating people in a way that makes them feel they are chatting with their best friend. That's something special. Hamza got millions of subscribers, so right now he doesn't aim for subscribers anymore. Nope, he's on a mission to changing the manhood and generations to come. He is focused to gathering only his most diehard fans. These folks aren't just numbers, they are real people who vibe with Hamza, vibe with his way of speaking and see a bit of themselves in him. That's the power of being unapologetically yourself. So his community right now costs $400 monthly. This is a lot, but still he has over 1000 followers inside of that. And his business, his unfiltered channel, is solely based on his personality. And he is preaching for you to do the same. Start a YouTube channel. This is what Hamza is proposing. Start documenting your journey. Because documenting your journey is like hitting the jackpot of personal growth. It's all about racking up those experiences that shaped you, helping you morph into someone genuine and fascinating. Think of it as your blueprint becoming a high-value individual, carving out a unique niche that's all yours. And let's be honest, diving deep in your values isn't a walk in the park. It's tough, but man, this is worth it. This is the most fulfilling. There are no shortcuts here. This is just a wild adventure that's your for taking. As you leave, learn and share your discoveries with others two steps behind you. You are turning your life into a series of lessons for the world and the real gold, you, one of a kind story and all the quirks that come with it. Embrace your weirdness. This is your superpower. <laughs> if you don't have any value to share, go for the adventure of life. Experience it and document the journey. Have the crazy goal and go to achieve it and document your journey on the way and share your lessons on the way. Because as Dan Coe says, if you will say, oh, I made one million dollars last month, this would be a lie. But if you will say, how I will create one million dollars for myself in the next three years, this is a leader statement. So you can be a leader starting today just by setting your goal out loud and sharing your journey and sharing your steps, sharing your plans on how you will achieve it. This is genuine, this is authentic, and this is the leadership that we truly need. You are enough today. You can start today and you should start today. The best day of starting documenting your journey was the day you were born. The second best day is today. If you would like to learn how to do it, I created this six weeks challenge. So check first link in the description. I show you step by step how to go out of your comfort zone and you will have your first video published in 15 minutes. No more, no more waiting, man. Because we need authenticity, we need real life people, real life stories, because we are living in this quick fix dopamine short form content era that is fueled by AI. How shit is that? People are yearning for real connection and for real people. And if you can deliver on it, as well as being a leader, this is a winning formula, man. This is not easy, but this is the most fulfilling way. Because with YouTube being the most demanded job that ever existed, the world actually doesn't need any more new YouTubers. But do you know what world really needs? Think about it. How many of these millions of subscribers of Hamza that want to be the same as him will succeed? Only a handful. These will be the people who step up to lead. I know what you're saying. Oh, I'm not the leader. I would like to be. I know, man. But you got to learn. If you want to succeed, you got to learn how to lead people. Because success doesn't just follow. It's earned by those who dare to lead in their own specific niche, in the, in the niche of yourself. So I'm thinking, I, I myself, inspired by Hamza, I couldn't be a leader in the masculine field. I could be a leader in my field of creativity, of storytelling, of emotional intelligence. Something that I truly understand. If I want to succeed, I cannot be just the follower. 
I have to be a leader. So don't just be another face in the digital crowd. Be a fucking leader, man. So even if you are starting from scratch with no results, you can begin your journey today. Why? Because you, as you are right now, you are enough. You are ready to share your voice, your inspirations, your dreams and your true character. People aren't just interested in success. They are eager to witness your journey to success, to see you grow and overcome challenges. This is the most inspiring, not just standing at the finish line. So I'm thinking, I will make this video and I'll publish it and Hamza will see it and then he will invite me to the interview with him. And I would be so proud to tell my life story with details to these guys because I think that I have a really interesting story to tell. And I'm thinking this could last even five hours and I could go to the details of details of my self-development journey. But I'm thinking, okay, would these people even like to listen? And then I realized I can do it. I can do it on my own channel. And I don't have to wait for any invitations. I can just, and I already did. I created this unfiltered channel, as strange as it may sound, and I will be putting long, unedited videos, trying to learn how to put the real value with my words and with my personality that I truly believe I have. So this way, I will be growing the deepest fan base there is. The people that are, that are similar to me, that are like-minded, and my story really resonate with them. I will still continue creating these videos, these documentaries on this channel, but I also, because I'm thinking that I have like nine years of my journey to share. And if the videos takes me even one week to create, this is too, this is too slow. I need to go to this, I need to go to this mindset of creating videos daily, just sitting down in front of the camera and talking. This is why I'm truly inspired by Hamza and I think his way of thinking is great. Embracing the long term is embracing the, the path less traveled. It's tough, yes, but it's where the most fulfilling treasures lie. Be unapologetically yourself. Chase what sets your heart on fire and keep it real, man. Dare to dream big, even if it seemed wild and unreachable and you seem like, well, man, I'm, I have nothing to share. Fuck off, step out of your comfort zone. That's where the magic happens. This is your narrative to write and you are the, and you are the one to write it, starting today. I think the Hamza story is really great because he came from the shittiest level of zero. He went through trauma, he went through low wages and he built it. His story is a, is a roller coaster because you have it spicy, you have the dark moments, the sad moments, you have the sweet victories, you have also the dark manipulation tactics. But I think all of these experiences were crucial for him to gain the experience to then give the wholesome advice. He, now he seems like the guy who went full red pill. He was this degenerate, he was partying, he was abusing drugs and alcohol and stuff. He went through that, but he took his lessons. And he, of course, used some kind of dark tactics, dark manipulations, but he also learned from that and he took his lessons. He kind of balanced his advice and now it seems like his advice is really based on powerful values that most of the young men doesn't have, don't have. And now his self-improvement advice is really wholesome because he doesn't just show you how to get girls. He shows you how to get a wife. He doesn't show you like how to get the perfect body. He shows you how to be healthy. He doesn't show you how to just do some meditations. He shows you how to work on your mental health. He doesn't show you how to make money. He shows you how to create the fulfilling, meaningful business based on your character. This is one of the hardest things to do, but most fulfilling and meaningful you can do. Especially, especially when AI is coming for creators, when AI is dropping these text to videos prompts. So Hamza achieved a lot. But as he is saying, at some point when you have money, when you have status, when you have recognition, you start to think about deeper purpose. And he really, really seems like he is genuine with that, that he really wants to spread the message of self-improvement, of masculine, healthy masculinity, 
based on powerful values to the young men, to generations to come. And I think personally, this is a great mission and he's honest with that, even though he used dark tactics before, I don't think he's using them anymore. This was Hamza. Thank you guys. But before you click that, first of all, thank you so much for watching till the end. I know it was long. Second of all, check the links in the description. You can check my course, six weeks challenge value creator today, where I talk about creating content starting today. Also check my unfiltered channel because I started and I will create these videos when I just talk to the camera and provide my genuine advice and my genuine life story. I know this was long. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I appreciate you 100%. Peace.